So team, uh, welcome to the CI CD continuous integration and continuous deployment live training session one. So we just had one orientation session kind of giving the picture of what exactly continuous integration and continuous deployment means. And in spite of uh, having the automation knowledge, framework knowledge, creating regression suite, we're using some framework. Uh, our expectations from the QA will not stop there. We should be in collaboration with the development team and uh, other engineering teams. We should integrate our scripts into the continuous pipeline so that like when the build is ready, uh, unit test generates and after that our regressions like you know the build gets deployed into system integration testing environment. Then our regression suit will run and if that gets successfully passed, then we will deploy it into UAT environment and uh, UAT scripts will run and then it will deploy into production. So it, it goes like a, uh, I cannot really go into the details like orientation, but it goes like a pipeline from one step to the other step and definitely our regression suit and you know the build management, uh, how do we run these scripts automatically so we have a couple of tools helping in those areas. We are going to start with one of the first tool um, today. So today is basically the agenda is to understand uh, one of the main tool called uh, Apache Maven tool. Um, we're going to focus on today and tomorrow primarily on this uh, Apache Maven tool. So then followed by we want to understand Jenkins for configuring it and running the scripts and and we'll also understand the git and github which is a central repository tool. So whatever the project code that you do it ultimately it should be in a central repository. So we're going to do that as well. All right. Okay. So let's let's focus on today and tomorrow on this important tool called Apache Maven tool. I have again like previously uh, which I have shared all the documents with you all and people who are new to this uh, particular CICD section alone. You can watch this document called Apache Maven and Jenkins integration which is already placed into the Google Drive and I'll ensure uh, all the people in this group will receive the access to the Google Drive. So here is a document Apache Maven and Jenkins integration is the document name and let's get into uh, the details of what is Apache Maven. But before that let me explain the story behind why this project or why this tool came into picture. So we have created many projects right. We have created many Java projects and for your automation project also you will create a Java project. And for uh, typical development project also they will be creating a Java project and in this Java project we have used many dependencies many dependencies like when we used J unit uh, we use something called J unit dot jar file right J unit jar file. Can you quickly recap what all the different jar files that we have used people who attended selenium sessions with me and people who are new if you're familiar with selenium and the jar file that you have used just just list out some of the jar files. We used J in a jar file. We have used uh, test ng jar file for creating the test ng test right. Right. What else we have used? We have Ap used Apache POI jar files for creating the data driven framework keyword driven framework right what else yeah apache poi what else we have used we can refer here why should we really worry about it so Okay. 
that's going to give us an access to the okay. so here if you see we have so many reference libraries right we have used jane we have used test we have main uh, selenium server right the most important one is the the first web driver one so we have added selenium server right so and lots of files for example something related to these um, XML files we have um, let's see if there is a log for J in case if you are going to use log for J we have not done the session but yeah log for J for logging it and JDBC I'm sure people who have done the database side you have JDBC jar file so like this we have many yeah, MySQL connection, uh, Java. So depending on the data types, I've just made it as a common one as a JDBC related one. So like this, we have many, many, many jar files in the world of Java. The main dependency files are the jar files. And each of these jar files have many versions. Like for example, in JUnit itself, we had four, fourth version, we had 4.1 to 4.13, 4.14, and then we have JUnit 5, and before that JUnit 3. So there are so many versions of it. Similarly, in TestNG, we have like 6.13, we have 6.12, 6.11. So like that, we have many versions of each of these jar files, right? What is a common problem uh, while doing all these things is like taking care of these dependencies. For example, you may be referring to one package. You may be uh, referring to one of the package that your friend has created or your team member has created. And he may be using uh, a particular version of jar file and which you don't have the corresponding jar file, uh, exactly the similar jar file. Then what is going to happen? Your project at the time of building the project, uh, the compilation will fail, the build will fail. Right? Compilation of the code will fail, hence a build will fail. So we'll get into all those dependency issues if you really don't take care of these things in a proper way. That is a first problem in the world of Java. Okay, even if you know exactly this is the jar file that I have to take care, right? What did we do while creating the project? We created a project and how did we add it? We right clicked and we went to like a build path configure build path and this is where libraries add external jars and from here we have added those right we are not going to do like this in a, in a I mean we do it when you start with the project but when you have more collaborative teams and when you have teams across the globe working on uh, sharing the you know source code and trying to work in a very very collaborative environment this kind of structure is not going to work so what we need is we need some central repository kind of thing where all these jar files are available right we need a repository where all these jar files are kind of maintained so that we can pick it up from that repository file and we can add to our project exactly with the similar problem when in the whole world of java people working together and trying to exchange the code so somebody created a, a repository globally that anybody can access and open source and that repository is called maven repository so this apache maven team created a repository called maven repository in which you will have all the latest jar files all the versions of jar files in fact and you remember we downloaded uh, all these jar files as and when we needed and at that time i recommended to use the maven repository itself because that's where you'll find every single thing. So we can we can look at it. Uh, how does it looks like is that? All you have to do is simply go to Maven repository and in the Maven repository, you'll find every single jar file. So all these jar files are there. For example, all you have to do is just type testng. Then you'll find the corresponding testng jar files and you go over here, you'll find all the versions of these jar files. Similarly, you can say JUnit, then you'll find all the JUnit related jar files here. Right? So, uh, to solve this problem of jar file dependencies, the Apache Maven team came up with something like uh, Maven repository, 
which is public I would say like open source anybody can download it right anybody who works in a Java project and need these kind of things they can simply what they can do they can make a request to this either they can uh, connect to the repository the way we connected download the file and do it or when we are going to use the maven we you'll understand how it automatically downloads and keeps it okay so you'll understand with that structure but the fundamental problem is taking care of these dependencies there's one more thing that what happens local to the company in a local uh, uh, project management is that for example let's say you're working for some xyz company and that XYZ company is creating a couple of uh, jar files, right? Uh, and within the company, there are many teams. Within the company, there are many teams, like uh, maybe there is a uh, customer related projects team, there is a payments related projects team, and there is a sales related projects team, etc. We have different, different teams. And these teams are maintaining different jar files. So they have some jar files that they have they are creating as part of their project. Jar files in case of Windows and in case of web applications, it will be WAR file. Okay, it, it will be like a WAR. Java archival, web archival. So WAR file. So what companies will do, they will maintain a local repository from all the different teams uh, maintaining all these local repositories. And now let's say you are creating a new project. You need few from this uh, public open source ones so you can access them into your project. You also need something very specific to your company which are very local to your project. So you also can add to your project and you can do your work. So that is how the required Java projects will be created and uh, dependency management will be taken care. But what happens with when we go with Maven is that uh, it will simplify the job like you don't need to really go to external jars and add them rather what you can do is you can create while creating a project itself you can create it as a Maven project instead of simple Java project create it like a Maven project. Okay. And when you create it like a Maven project it, it comes with a particular structure. Okay, it comes with a particular convention model and this is not just okay in, in simple okay, after hearing so much of like 10 to 15 minutes if you still did not get what is what is mean by Apache Maven tool uh, we can simply define it as a build management tool because ultimately your Java code needs to be uh, built and it has to be compiled and built it and to take care of those dependency managements uh, this tool is going to help so we call it as a build management tool apart from build management tool people even call it as a project management tool it's complete project management tool because uh, developer score can be maintained tester score can be maintained all the resource files the configuration files test data files all that we can also maintain as part of this so all you need to do is create a project Java Maven project then it comes with a particular structure and in that structure, a very important uh, file will be there called palm.xml file. Uh, it's called project object. This is not page object model, okay? This is not that palm. This is different palm. This is project object model. That is page object model framework that we have created as part of the Selenium. It's a framework. This is project object model and it will have a .xml file. In the .xml file, we're going to maintain all the dependencies. We're going to maintain all the dependencies uh, in an XML format. All these jar files that you need uh, should go as a dependency. And while mentioning the dependency, you'll mention a particular version. For example, testng, I want 6.14 version. And junit, let's say 4.13 version. Something like that, you'll mention all the dependencies in the XML file. And when you compile this project, what will happen is that it will see locally to this project whether it has the test ng 6.14 uh, J unit 4.13 is available or not. If it is available, then no problem. It will compile the project and your project will get compiled and built. But if any dependency is not available, it will automatically send a request. You don't need to do anything it will automatically send a request to this Maven repository which is available in 
centrally uh, in some data center, right? Which is accessible for the worldwide as a public. So it will automatically send a request to this and it will ask, hey, give me 6.14 test ng. Let's say that is here. And this will download into your, your system. It will automatically get you into system. And where it is going to maintain, it is going to maintain. I'll show you the folder where it will maintain. There is a dot m2 folder in your local machine and it will make a copy in that particular folder dot m2 folder under your user section okay it will maintain a copy there and that copy will be used for your project also likewise for every single jar that is not available in your project your maven project will make a request to maven repository and maven maven repository will give the response back with that version so the project will download make it available to the, automatically it will add it to the configure build path external jar and all you don't need to do anything it will add and it will also maintain a copy in your dot m2 repository so ultimately uh, for example if somebody is creating a like test ng like jnit like apache py if somebody is coming up with a new new java solution that other people wants to use it all they have to do is they have to register with the Maven repository Apache people. Hey, I have some solution and I want to put it in your repository so that other people can use it. So they'll follow that registration mechanism or, you know, kind of uh, uh, making it available here. And so that, you know, your jar file also will be available in the Maven repository going forward. All the people can use it. So that is about Maven repository. Same concept will be used in an organization for the resources within the within their organization from one team to the other team you know cross collaborating uh, the reusing of the code from one team to the other team they can maintain one local repository maintain all the jar files and you can add it to your uh, m2 folder or some other local folder and add it to your project so this is how the the biggest problem in the world of java the jar dependencies where dependencies is taken care so any quick questions before we get into understanding a little bit more in detail theoretically and then also creating a project any quick questions uh, there were competitive tools to this like um, there was a tool called ant it is still there but a lot of people kind of migrating from ant to maven Hope you all can hear me good. I just got a warning saying the audio quality is degraded. But just let me know. Okay, it's clear, right? Uh, don't worry about where at this point of the time, uh, Piyush. So let's focus on the jar for now. Okay, so let's let's try to understand. So you have these notes for you. Later on, you can refer. So Maven is essentially a project management and a comprehension tool which provides a way to help with the managing builds. It's a it's simply called build management tool. It helps in documentation, reporting, taking care of the dependencies. In one liner, we can even say it takes care of your software configuration management. Uh, for any project team, writing the code is not the only problem. The biggest problem is managing that code, managing that code in such a way that uh, other teams can reuse it properly. And when multiple teams are working on the same code, how do you take care of those uh, conflict things and all that? So that's whole process. We call it as software configuration management. And how do you take care of multiple releases and how do you distribute your code with other teams? So all that uh, is taken care in the Apache Maven. Maven can provide benefits uh, for your build process by employing standard conventions. Like when we create a Maven project, it's going to cre create a structure. Like I can quickly show you the structure. Something like this, it'll come. SRC main Java, SRC test Java, and then you will have system library, and then you'll have Maven dependencies, and this palm.xml is going to. So it will follow the convention structure. So when you have a convention uh, in a particular standardized structure then everybody will follow in the similar format otherwise somebody will put uh, resources in some other folder and somebody will put the libraries in some other folder so uh, it will bring us a consistent format 
and yeah uh, it also helps you to accelerate the development cycle while at the same time helping you to achieve higher rate of success the main purpose is to resolve the incompatibilities with the dot char file that are used by different projects so the main main biggest problem in the world of java is taking care of these jar file dependencies and that is kind of solved with maven maven can automatically download the required version if you add it in the dependency form.xml so that i have already explained uh, maven maintains a central repository of all the jar files so we saw the maven repository so that's where all the jar files are maintained and uh, it's a uh, it's open source anybody can take it the other benefits of maven uh, makes the build process easy it provides a uniform build system. It provides a quality project management, like people call it as not only build management tool, it's also called project management tool. And it provides a guidelines for best practices while developing it. So overall, your entire team will follow same structure and, and the practices. So it just gets a uniformity. Allowing transparent migration to new features. Uh, any new features that gets added uh, can easily be migrated into the project. Okay, so let's get into the practical aspects of it. Hope now you understand the importance of the Maven. Uh, let's let's see from where we can download this. How do we create a Maven project and how do we take care of all that? Uh, in the very beginning of the Selenium, you all have downloaded the JDK Java, right? And I'm not sure how many of you have really set the class path. So what we generally do is we go to the my computer properties in your my computer properties. And we go to these advanced system settings. And go to these environment variables. Uh, we mainly specify two important things. One is a Java home and uh, so this is java home and there is one more thing that will set it is a path why we need to set these two is that suppose first you downloaded your java right once you downloaded your java uh, let's say it's gone into c colon program files sometimes in some machines depending on where you download it will go to c colon uh, or d colon program files right so Based on the system configurations, it will install it either C colon program files or D colon program files or C colon uh, Windows program files. It will download into certain location. And all, ultimately, what we wanted to do is so you may be anywhere, like I'll just go to command prompt from here. Wherever you are, right now I'm in C colon Selenium documents, right? From wherever you are, if you want to access the Java, right? You can you can simply type Java if in version. You can see I am right now in C drive Selenium documents and I'm simply typed Java if in version and it is telling me it's 1.8.0171. That is possible because of this Java home and the path that has been set. If I don't set that in my system variables, right? If I don't set this path and the Java home in my system variables, what is going to happen is if at all I remove or if I don't set it, and if I from any other location, if I type Java if in version other than other than C colon program files Java, uh, other than this location, if I do it JDK, if I other than this location, if I type Java if in version, it will simply tell me. Uh, Java is not recognized as an internal or external command. That means system cannot understand if you do it from other directory. You have to do it only from this directory. Always you have to come over here and run your Java programs. Do you think is that really possible all the time? Always coming to the location from where the Java is installed. Then, So that's where we are going to do this uh, Java class path. How did we do that? Your my computer properties, advanced system settings, environment variables. Under the system variables, we're going to add two things. One is the Java home, and you will set the path of this, which is up to here, JDK. 
sorry up to here the jdk and there is one more variable we are going to do it is path and in that how do you do that path where you have to set up to the bin so basically you have to go one more level like here you have to go bin and you have to set this path mac is a bit different story deeply like you have to run a command in the terminal to do that uh, you have to do it with only command if you want i can bring you the commands later but it's not like ui navigation or even if you just google it you'll find the command you have to go to terminal and set there is a set class path command and you have to do it and you have to so after that you'll set okay so two things you have to do one is in case if somebody has not done this java thing i gave uh, commands here so setting the path for uh, path and home for java so exactly you'll follow these steps you go to environment variables system variables you add java home which is only up to jdk and then you will add under path variable if it is if you all have windows 10 uh, it's a very simple thing all you have to do is add like this first is java underscore home and then here you copy that path whatever sorry first you have to go up to here right so you'll simply copy this path and set it over here and then you'll click on okay that is for the java home and then it will add uh, the variable like this way and how do you add path again the same thing path by default it will be there in most of the machines most of the systems all you have to do is if it is not there again you will click on new and say path equal to but mostly it will be there edit it already existing ones will come like this and you click on new variable so there is a new text option will come and here you have to just path and it should be up to bin so it should be up to bin okay that's how you're going to do it right so any questions on adding the java home and uh, path we should have done by now but that's okay okay the same way we are going to do it for maven also the same way we're going to do it for maven also but first of all let's see from where i can install and download the maven etc so i have all the commands so i can do it later also for the java home so let's see from where you can download the maven all you have to do is go to google say apache maven download just say apache maven download then it will take you to this uh, download apache maven website or i would say this this we have already worked during at the time of apache py jar files right so you can go to maven.apache.org also find then you will go to download section in the download section you have this uh, file very important file I'll just make a note here this is a file it's a binary dot zip file so that's the file that you're going to download it okay all you have to do is click on the 3.5.4 I'm not sure what version I have I'll just download it Let's say open when done and we can go to the downloads here is a file and let me see what I have the previous one it's a three point no not this one It's a 3.5.0 and this time it is 3.5.4 so you can extract this how do you do that you can right click right click and hope you all have this 7 zip or win zip or whatever right extract the files usually I'll do it into uh, 
some location C drive. I'll just put it over here. Right now I have like 3.5.0. Let me do one thing. I'll create one folder here. C drive, make new folder. I'll say Maven. And I'll extract it into the Maven. So it goes to C colon Maven folder. So repeating it again, we'll go to Apache Maven website download the Maven software from this Apache Maven 3.5, whatever the version, hyphen binary dot zip. Then you will extract it in some location. So I have extracted to C drive Maven and here is a software, right? Okay, so one thing that you can check in your machine is that anywhere in the command prompt, just go to anywhere again, go to anywhere in your command prompt. Just type MVN hyphen version. If you get some output, like previously I have already set it up 3.5.0 from anywhere in your, like I'm in like SQL and users uh, Shinger folder, I'm just typing MVN hyphen version. If you type and if you're getting the version, that means some path has already been set. But most of your machines, what will happen? Obviously, you'll get an error. It's not recognized as an internal or external command. The reason because you would have not set it previously. So how are we going to set it? Uh, the way we set it, the Java path, we have to set this one also. So we'll do a right click my computer properties or this PC properties, advanced system settings, environment variables all you have to do is simply come over here to the path variable to the path variable and previously i would have set this right i have 3.5.0 slash pin which i will be replacing so which i'll be replacing with C drive Maven up to here. So path is a little lengthy. So C drive Maven, Apache Maven 3.5.4. Again, Apache Maven 3.5.4. Do I really require that folder again? Yeah. Previous one is Okay, it's simple. Previously, I would have uh, just like what I did is this is the main folder, right? This is the main folder. So I copied this. Yeah, I copied this. And just directly have it here. Oh, not sure what will happen. Okay, I should have not deleted. So one thing that I have to do is again, I have to extract it. Sorry for that. I'll extract it, extract the files into Anyway, so the path is going to be a little lengthy, but that's okay. Ultimately, you need to take the path up to here. 
and and add it to your my computer properties hope you guys are following right no confusion just that like i wanted to cut short that folder for so i deleted which is a mistake but otherwise something like this we have to add so i can add a new variable and i can say to this let's see now i have two and let's see what will happen which one will refer i can be anywhere not only here no if i am here obviously it will come that only uh, this time here i'll type command somewhere i'm here yeah, i will say mbn hyphen no no not based i i can do it from anywhere <laughs> So it's still referring to the 3.5.0, which is the older one. And if I delete, probably. And that's it. You'll just set the path. Let me. Yeah, I'm just planning to delete that and see what will happen. MVN hyphen version. So you can see uh, the latest one is coming like 3.5.4 okay so until you don't set the path it will be simply you will be getting the error as uh, mbn is not recognized as an internal external command but the moment you set the path whatever then it will it will uh, take care of whatever is available okay is it clear up to here everybody how to set the path and everything There is one more thing that you have to do before you start creating the project. So till now we did only one thing actually. We just downloaded the Maven software from Apache and we have set the path into the uh, My Computer properties. There is one more thing that you have to do is uh, installing the plugin. There is a plugin that's available between Eclipse and uh, Eclipse and Maven. So all you have to do is you have to go to this location, download.eclipse.org technology M2E releases. So just let's, how I know, you can just go Google it. You will find it. For example, you have to say Eclipse Maven plugin. You will just say Eclipse Maven uh, plugin download. What is this plugin? Because both are two different softwares. Maven is a different software. It will create a build particular you know, convention way of creating a project at the end of the execution. And it, and it has a life cycle. We'll see a Maven has its own life cycle. So to follow that life cycle and to generate the reports at the end of the execution and that reports, we need to see it in Eclipse. So we need a plugin. You remember TestNG plugin that we installed? We all installed during the TestNG time something similar we have to do now for apache maven and that is here m2 e eclipse so just go over to this website and you'll find that url here this is a url which i am using it there in my document it's the same url okay so either you copy from there or copy from here is fine 
uh, we'll just have this in handy and all you have to do is and moreover latest Eclipse softwares they all by default come with Maven integration so how can we confirm like the way testng also I told you uh, it might be already there in most of the latest ones how to confirm go to new projects new other and can you see Maven here Maven project so that means it's already there or previously I would have installed any of the way either the, this version of Eclipse which is oxygen version by default would have this integration or I would have installed so how to confirm you'll go to file new project and if you see this Maven project then you're good in case if somebody does not see that then what you do is how do you how do we install the plugins in Eclipse how many ways in which we can install the plugins in Eclipse how many ways will do that two ways right one is help install new software what's the other one marketplace correct right there are two ways in which we can do one is install new software or eclipse marketplace so let's go to install new software click on add and you can say this is like maven and you can give the path that download.eclipse.org technology m2e release click on ok and you know for the very first time it takes some time and you see a Maven integration for Eclipse has come so you'll select that and click on next you can see here something is happening here when I try to do that on the right bottom here so click next you can see here Maven Tyco utilities basically download and install your you can see something is happening b b u s c dot com where do you see that maven type utilities see i mean in the marketplace okay so many software at least uh, let's see let's see based on the probably the icon I might recognize something there's so many so many things in the world of Java so it's not that everything that we'll use but if I see the icon probably will recognize or it might be the tool internally used all we are doing is at a higher level on the Maven side but the tool might be used internally by the Maven software so this is one way you will install the plugin and after that what we'll have to do we'll have to restart the Eclipse please you all remember that it will automatically ask you to restart the Eclipse we should do that will be uninstalled what is that maybe this is the previous one okay if you're doing it for the first time then don't worry so it will just install for you and after that what will happen is keep my installation the same and modify the items being installed to be compatible uh, that's fine so what will happen for you for the first time when you're doing it will just go ahead and install everything and then you will get one um, recommendation to restart your Eclipse. So please do that. When you do the uh, when you do the restart, that's when the actual installation will be fully completed. Okay. So that is one way you can install it. The other way is you'll normally go to Eclipse Marketplace. And then you'll find it over here, Maven. Um, 
this is what you're talking about. That's not the one we are looking for this one Maven integration for Eclipse. All we need is this one definitely not these. These are like we have been helping our client to migrate Maven Tyco and the biggest problem that we face is when we are oh it's very specific very specific to some of the client which who is facing the issue so uh, it a particular technology client was trying to migrate and they had a problem and trying to solve that uh, so it, it's not something that generic that we all need okay but this is the one that we all need m2e maven integration for eclipse maven to eclipse or maven integration for eclipse, right so and you can see the status shows for me as an installed and this is what we needed so any question in installing the plugin so here are the full steps what is it what is the connector uh, no just only that which i just showed you nothing else is required just the one that i just showed you do not install everything that's there okay people will create lots of utilities for different different no this is not required just install this that's it and i have clearly steps You'll download from here, uh, then you, if it's already installed, the update will be performed. Otherwise, the installation will be performed. After installation, Eclipse will restart. And to confirm the Maven plugin, what you have to do, you can go to Window Preferences and see if Maven is available. Window Preferences. More than this, the best way to confirm Maven is available is File, New, Other, and see if Maven is present. If Maven is present, then you can confirm that it's all set for creating the Maven project. All right. So these are the things that are required for to start with the Maven project. Any questions so far? And what will you do is you can create one file new other project select Maven. We created other test ng like J unit. Similarly, you will select Maven and you will say Maven project. Okay, I'm creating a new project and we'll see how. Uh, the stuff will be taken under Maven project. So you'll select Maven, Maven project, click next. Um, so you will get all these options like uh, create a simple project, just select this option for now. Just say next. There are a few important things that we have to provide. One is a group ID, artifact ID, how you want to package it, right? A couple of things. So I have the explanation here in case if you have any questions and the steps almost doing it. So this group ID is similar to the package name what we generally package our code, right? In Java, how did we package? We package something like com dot org dot um, whatever the project like we created a couple of packages so you can say com dot uh, maybe like I would say ITL dot learning Maven enter an artifact ID. yeah so this is fine something like uh, a commercial dot organization name and whatever the project that you have. So it's the same like package name then you have artifact ID. Artifact ID is similar to the project name, something like what we do. So this is like my Maven project or my learning Maven project, something like that. You can create, you can provide some project name kind of thing, which is artifact ID. Okay, the best way I'll tell you like how we can identify these is go to maven repository if you go to maven repository uh, let's say 
for example, you want to pick up test engine, right? Just go to test engine, search for it. While the test engine people, when when they upload it over here, you can see something like 6705 artifacts. They're all here. These are all called artifacts. Okay, we'll pick up one of them. Let's say 6.14.3. I'll pick up one of them. Can you see something, uh, some extra? This is the dependency code we are going to add. And in this dependency code, you can see. So that means one thing that you need to understand the initial picture that I've explained. Here is a Maven repository that I've explained. And any anybody creates a new jar file and if they want to put into the Maven repository, they'll have to follow some structure. And that structure is what you can see over here. It should have some proper group ID. It should have some artifact ID and it should have a version name. And it should be like, where it should go it should go under tests or normal packages etc so you can see there is a dependency structure in which they are creating it same way you have to add into the maven repository and especially what we are interested in now is this group id artifact id and version so test ng people what group id they gave they gave arg .test ng. and what is the artifact id they gave test ng. and the version they gave 6.14.3 now similarly when you are creating a project when you are creating some solution there will be a group id there will be artifact id and there will be a version number anywhere you see this version number hyphen snapshot that is not a release version it is a testing version you all know two types of versions right for any software build version and a release version what is the difference is for example next version of ios is planning to come let's say okay they're planning to release ios 12. to the market they want to make it as 12.0.1 this is what they want to release okay 12.0.1 is a release version they want to make but internally within the apple the QA team purpose or for the UAT purpose, they'll first prepare 12.0. Maybe like uh, 0 0.1 and they'll make like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 like that. They'll make number of versions. Each of these build gets tested with the implementations which are done and somewhere 99, let's say 12.0.1. Uh, 0 0.99 they they have eliminated all the major issues and this is what they call it as a golden build these are all called build versions and this is what they want to release to the market so it's called release version and this is called build version so they will have number of builds being tested that is what as a QA we are all going to do the testing in every organization on the builds and they realize 90 I'm just throwing some number here 99 is a golden build which almost we have to executed all our test cases uh, no major defects or all the major issues are resolved and as a as a team project team they decided this is the one that we wanted to release to the market so this one we will rename to 12.0.1 internally apple people knows or the project team knows this is the one but to the market, they will release it as 12.0.1. Any software you take, for example, take Notepad, go to help, go to about Notepad. You will see two things. Microsoft wanted to release this as 1803 version, but internally, this is a build version. 17134.228 is a build version, and this is a release version. Like, And they wanted to ship it as part of this Windows 10 software like that every software will have a release version which is going to go to the market and a build version which their qa team or uat team is going to validate it right so anything that you see as a snapshot 
is more like a build version it's not a release version and anything that you see without snapshot just like only we saw here right test ng uh, 6.14.3 that is a release version like that if you go to j unit they will follow some structure let's go to j unit let's pick up one of them 5.3.0 and can you see here the group id they are putting it as org dot j unit dot jupiter uh, artifact id j unit dot j unit iphone jupiter iphone api and the version is 5.3.0 so like this every software needs to have a group id an artifact id and a version so we are also giving a group id an artifact id and a version and how do you want to package this software by default it is selected jar file so just keep it as a jar file that means the code will be generated at the end of it like a jar file in case of web applications they are going to generate it like a var file that's all just click on finish so you can see um, a project has come like this my learning maven project and most importantly you will see the structure there is a particular structure in which it is came main java main resources test java test resources your actual main code project code whatever the project code that you are writing let's say it's an e-commerce application and within the e-commerce application there are many multiple packages they're going to create under the packages they're going to create a lot of java class files all that will be here and uh, there are many different configuration files they're going to keep it uh, that kind of resources will be here and to, to test that code the development team will write some unit tests test team will write some regression test that should go here ultimately and anything related to the test resources like test data file our excel file for keyword driven framework data driven framework all those files should come over here and the remaining thing you all familiar the normal system library src there is a speciality about the target folder i'll explain tomorrow and ultimately this is the most important one we'll also talk about it tomorrow as the first thing this is where i'll just double click on this palm.xml when you double click on the palm.xml file it will open that uh, when you open the palm.xml file it will open like this these are all the test files so let me close my previous ones so when you just double click on the palm.xml file it will open like this and uh, you can see the group id artifact id version whatever you have to go to the last one palm.xml file here your project is going to create it as with this group id with this artifact id with this id under this we are going to add under this we are going to add uh, dependencies tomorrow and we will see how those dependencies gets automatically downloaded added to our project uh, well a couple of them will add delete and we'll see how we'll play with this file to understand it better so uh, that way we will understand and then we will create a couple of tests under this test java and we'll see how the project gets created in maven so as part of the session one just try to understand the need of maven why we are going to the maven and trying to download the software set this up uh, tomorrow we'll see the palm.xml file dependencies and then we'll create a couple of uh, projects does it sounds good All right, go with this for today. Um, we'll meet tomorrow same time and to understand the second session on the Maven. Thanks everyone. Just do watch it and try to set it up till now, whatever we did. Thank you.